All right, and we have some breaking news coming into us now. Britain's Prince Philip, the husband of Queen Elizabeth, has died at the age of 99. Windsor Castle has just confirmed that he died this morning. His health had been deteriorating in recent months with several visits to the hospital. Philip was a member of the Greek and Danish royal families before marrying Elizabeth in 1947. We'll go live to London for the latest in a moment, but first, here's a look back at his life. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, the husband of Queen Elizabeth II. Always at her side or a few steps behind, that was royal protocol for the British Prince Consort. The couple was married more than 70 years. The former Royal Navy officer lived an eventful public life that was occasionally seasoned by his sharp tongue and penchant for dry humour. He was born Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark on the island of Corfu in 1921. But despite his family's aristocratic background, money was often in short supply. His parents divorced and Philip ended up in England, where he began a career in the Royal Navy at the outbreak of World War II. He met the future queen for the first time in the 1930s. He was 18 and for Elizabeth, just 13 at the time, it was reportedly love at first sight. Her parents were nonplussed with the prince of humble means. But Elizabeth persevered. In 1947, shortly after the war, the two were married. Their first child, Prince Charles, was born the following year. The family lived on the island of Malta, where Philip was stationed as an officer. But the death of the British King George VI in 1952 changed their lives dramatically. Elizabeth became queen. Philip, her prince consort, soon became well known for his quips. He was even reported to have asked the queen after her coronation, where did you get that hat? That won him a warm place in British hearts. That he wasn't fond of playing the role of an extra in countless televised appearances was no secret. Still, he fulfilled his duties with an elegant, if sometimes dour, distance. Award ceremonies, receptions, openings. Philip was never without a joke of some kind, even when he was given a set of headphones as a gift. I mean, can you get Radio 3 on? <laughs> The death of Princess Diana in 1997 was an anguishing low point in the life of the Windsors. The monarchy faced days of mounting disapproval until Queen Elizabeth spoke openly of her grief. Philip was a source of strength to the Queen. Like uh, all families, we went through the full range of pleasures and tribulations of bringing up children. I'm naturally somewhat biased, but I think our children have done rather well under very different and difficult and demanding circumstances. His descendants, including Prince Charles, next in line to the throne, and grandsons William and Harry, saw the royal heritage through the many highs and lows of the early 21st century. Prince Philip held the British crown longer than any other prince consort before him. In the course of 70 years, he visited over 140 countries and gave more than 5,000 speeches. He'll be remembered the world over for his calm, irreverent wit. Let's go right to London. Our correspondent, Charlotte Shelson-Pill, is standing by for us. Charlotte, as we said, Windsor Castle now confirming that Prince Philip has passed away at the age of 99. What more can you tell us about what you're hearing there? Yeah, that's right. We've had a statement from the royal family announcing uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's passing. It says, with deep uh, sorrow, Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, uh, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, His Royal Highness has passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Now, we are expecting uh, more of a statement from the palace on that. We're also hearing 
that the Prime Minister is due to give a statement outside Downing Street as well. Obviously, we're expecting that to be an extremely uh, sombre moment. The First mm. Minister of Scotland uh, also joining those uh, paying their respects already to this news. She's tweeted that she's deeply saddened by the news that the Duke of Edinburgh has died. She said, I send my personal and deep condolence condolences and those of the Scottish government and the people of Scotland to Her Majesty, the Queen and her family. So this news now just coming into us. We are expecting further statements like the ones I just heard and that statement from the Prime Minister here uh, in the coming hours. This has just uh, been confirmed, as you said, Charlotte, but have you seen any reactions uh, among the British public, for example, on social media? How are people reacting to this? It's still very early days at the moment. The news is just sinking in. But as I'm sure you can imagine, there will be a, a huge response here to this news. What you have to bear in mind is, is Prince Philip is the old, oldest and by far the longest serving consort here in the UK. His, his time as, as the husband of the Queen has really defined or been a huge part of, of the modern uh, era. Everybody uh, here uh, knows uh, stories about Prince Philip. He's attended thousands uh, of public events as well. So we are expecting, of course, as I'm sure you can imagine, a very big response from the public here. This uh, wasn't totally unexpected news, though. You mentioned uh, that he had spent some time in hospital. We know that he uh, underwent a, a heart procedure. So he was uh, sent back to, to, to Windsor Castle uh, last month. And uh, now, just a few weeks later, we're hearing that he has now passed away. We saw images, uh, Charlotte, of his many years at the Queen's side. I mean, what do you think his legacy will be and how he has shaped uh, the royal family? Right. Well, the Queen herself said on their golden wedding anniversary that her, he was quite simply her strength and stay. And I think that that is a quote that we're going to hear a lot over the coming days as, as we remember Prince Philip. Uh, she went on to say in a, in a speech then that the whole family and many, uh, this and many other countries owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim or we shall ever know. And uh, we've been hearing so often how he was a modernizing figure in the post-World uh, War II era, modernizing figure for the royal family, that is. But of course, he'll remember, be remembered as well for his, his no-nonsense attitude, uh, the occasional gaffe as well uh, through uh, his time as the consort uh, to the Queen. But this, I'm sure, will uh, prompt an outpouring of grief here from the British public. And despite the fact we'd known he'd spent time in hospital, a good deal of, of shock as well. Uh, there are very few people who will remember a time before he was consul to the Queen. Our correspondent Charlotte Shelson Pill there in London will be coming back to you again, of course, uh, at the top of the hour for more on this news.